what's going on guys and welcome back to the channel super excited to be back it's been too long and I know for many of you out there it has been too long be honest did you miss me if you missed me drop a like down in that uh, comment section just kidding you can't drop a like in the comment section but let me know down there it always helps to hear from you guys today we are going to be talking about how to make cannabis derived terpenes as well as providing you some possible SOPs that you can extract and post produce those terpenes in a delicate way so as not to disturb any of those and in the next coming weeks probably for the next six months I'm going to try to do three a day plus the live stream so definitely make sure that you're tuned into the channel uh, because we're going to be going over every piece of equipment that we're using in the laboratory and teaching you step by step how to use every piece of site. I think that there will be some super valuable information and content there for you guys. We got a bit to cover today, so without any further ado, let us go ahead and dive right on in to the content. Guys, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, bell button, notification because we are going to be doing live streams just for two live streams only, more. And then we are going to be limiting it all to our subscribers that are on our base. And guys, if you do not know what happens in those live streams, get, definitely go check out a few of those beforehand. You can find all type of information there. Not to mention, you have the ability to drop your own question that you would like answered by a professional and we answer them on the spot, giving you that real time, real world information that honestly, you really can't find anywhere else. So definitely make sure that you're subscribed and you turn on those bell button notifications. Those are happening Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific time, starting this next Wednesday will be back up and running and I do apologize for any technical difficulties that we might experience in the process of this video we are still getting settled in and making sure we test our lighting and all of that and everything is good how to make cannabis derived terpenes or CDT I am Grim from WKU consulting but bam terps for days scientists are proving what aromatherapists have been suggesting for years we can and do experience physiological changes based on aromatic response nothing could be truer than these aromas emitted by the cannabis flower. Cannabis derived terpenes are those that occur naturally in the cannabis plant and were created as a natural pest repellent. Terpenes also assist the organism in protecting against compromising parasites and support in attracting food. We'll get to that in just a minute. Through a holistic lens, whole plant cannabis derived terpenes will always be the preferred choice as they're formulated by pulling nutrients directly from the earth and are not created in a laboratory. Now, We'll get into that in a minute too. Because whole plant cannabis contains vital molecules, terpenes derived and harvested from the plant are thought of as the more beneficial and synergistic. So let's talk about a few of them that you are going to find in your cannabis plants here. You're going to have myrcene, hailed as one of the most abundant terpenes offered from the cannabis plant. Cannabis-derived myrcene terpenes are known to give your cannabis a spicy, earthy aroma. Limonene, a fruity, citrus terpene found in many body and home care products and is believed to provide anxiety and stress relief, as well as antimicrobial properties for cleaning up that kitchen. Pinene, one of the most common terpenes found in the cannabis plant is pinene. Pinene smells exactly like you'd imagine. Piney, there are two types alpha pinene and beta pinene alpha pinene is the most prevalent in cannabis these feelings of alertness and focus are commonly reported in strains with significant levels of pinene remember when we used to think that oh yeah uh you know it's it's just all strain specific that's where you're getting all of your feelings, you know, sativa or an indica sleepy but actually we know now that this is largely due to an entourage effect Osamine, one of the lesser known and discussed terpenes, osamine is believed to have a variety of medicinal effects, calming and anti-inflammatory. Osamine has a woodsy smell. Oh, cut wood. Freshly cut wood. Love that smell. Terpinoline. 
floral, citrusy, and also giving off a woodsy aroma. And terpinaline has a mild to moderate sedative effect. So when coupled with something like an indica blend, KO, knockout, Floyd Mayweather type stuff right there, CDT. So one of the things that I love the most about terpenes, I love this the most about terpenes because it's super cool how everything interacts biologically and naturally in the universe, right? As everything was made and created all in a perfect symbiotic relationship towards one another. So in many plants and insects and even us as humans, we have terpenes. We create those terpenes, right? Have you ever smelled a fart? Just kidding. So uh, we have the ability to create those and they actually help us maintain our homeostasis. But what I love the most is some plants will actually, or insects will actually release some terpenes, which would be smells that help predators stay away. So they warn this predator, hey, this might be dangerous. Even though the, the consumable plant might not necessarily, or the consumable insect might not necessarily be dangerous, it gives off a terpene that creates an aromatic response in the neurological pathways in whatever brain that is, is happening there and it warns the predator to stay away. Now also in the flowers, they release terpenes and this signals the bee to come and pollinate. So the bee comes because it smells sweet, they want to come and eat from the plant, they come and they are actually able from plant to plant to transfer pollen and actually make more flowers. And I think that that is brilliant. In your body, they also have terpenes that interact with the endocannabinoid system with an entourage effect of other cannabinoids that bring your balance your body back into its homeostasis, which is where your body is very difficult to adhere to any type of disease or sickness. If your body is in homeostasis, it's very difficult for you to get sick. Now, um, the, that is just interesting to me because medicinally, actually, the, the availability of cannabinoids to interact with these terpenes, these terpene, cannabis-derived terpenes, and actually deliver a better homeostasis providing medicinal product whenever you're ingesting or topical whatever you're doing to take your medication for instance it, it's just brilliant to me how much these terpenes have been overlooked for the cannabinoids cbd thc cbd cbg cbdn thco thp all of these other cannabinoids are known to be the number one effect when we're looking for purchasing products or doing something that we want to enable us to feel something however we have been skipping over for many many years and is now being verified by scientists all over the world scientists much smarter than you know Anyway, so uh, they are actually discovering that using terpenes in cohesion or cohesively with those cannabinoids are actually attributing more of your effect than using just the cannabinoids in its isolate form alone. Number four, biosynthetically created or the building blocks. These are the building blocks of a lot of your cannabinoids, period. So um, they're created biosynthetically in animals, in humans, in flowers, in plants, in trees. They are actually going through a chemical process, a biological chemical process that is created them and they make up a lot of the building blocks. Uh, what was the one? Uh, scalene. Was it scalene? I believe is actually a terpenoid that is used for as a building block for a steroid that has been used for life-saving devices. Okay, why CDT? So why not just reintroduce something like true terpenes or something like that, which I do love. I do love uh, that brand and especially. They make really good terpenes. But why, why the cannabis derived terpenes and why is there a market for that? Why do we need to know how to extract them and post produce them? Well, because most states do not allow the reintegration of terpenes due to tracking and compliance, especially if you're using something like metric, taking weight and adding it back into something that has already been batched and tracked and tagged is not legal or lawful necessarily in the tracking in the tracking sense. Synthetic is never as proficient as organic, and, and that is my personal opinion. There will be some people that say that anything that you can do organically, there's a scientist out there that can do it synthetically and have the same effect. However, I do not think so because we are not pulling, like we talked about earlier, pulling the nutrients out of the earth is actually attributing to the biosynthetical chem or the biochemical uh, the biosynthesis that is happening to synthesize those terpenes naturally in its natural environment or in the plant's natural environment or with the animal or whatever. So they're actually pulling nutrients out and creating, in my opinion, a much 
more proficient terpene profile than if it's just laboratory engineered. And the entourage effect medicinally, which we talked about just a little bit earlier, uh, but calming effects, sedative effects, antimicrobial effects, anti-inflammatory effects, there's so, 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 so much more than when you're feeling, when you're talking about your feeling or the bioavailability, not the bioavailability, but how you're interacting, I forget what that word's called, how your body is reacting to the different cannabinoids that you're ingesting and the, the, the calculative effect, if you will, is largely dependent on different terpenes and actually similar cannabinoids coupled with different terpenes can actually create different effects medicinally than you know let's say delta 9 thc coupled with a uh, linalool or pinene will create a different effect than delta 9 thc with um osamine for example right so how do we get this done bam here's the meat and potatoes of it so this is going to be something simple i like this one it's from lab society and i, I always always adhere to whatever lab society does as far as glassware they're probably my favorite out there but anyway this is what you're going to use to be able to distill those terpenes now we're going to go to over two sops so we're going to get to the first one here but basically this is going to be a steam distillation concept and you want to be easy you want to be easy on your cannabis because you do not want to since those um those terpenes are very fragile any amount of excessive heat will begin to degrade them and you'll lose the integrity of them so basically what we want is a simple hot water heater that we can cause to boil off a lot of times uh, on other you know simpler and it doesn't simpler doesn't mean it's worse but on other steam distillation plants you will find that this will actually be surrounded by a mantle instead of a separate water heater and if you wanted to do that that's fine too you would just drop this boiling flask into the mantle you would fill that up with water and then you would heat that up as that heats up, here is where you are going to pack all of your cannabis, right here in this orb. So as that heats up, the steam is going to cross and strip out all of the terpenes in the plant matter, and this will be visibly, uh, um, this will be visible to you. You will see the plant matter begin to wither, and it is not just cannabis that you can do this with. You can do this with any organic matter that does, in fact, have a large quantity of terpenes in it. As that steam heats up, it's going to reach its boiling point with the terpenoids. It's going to carry those out, and then our condensing coil is going to be that to 10 degrees Celsius, uh, not 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 very cold. Uh, I'm sorry. 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 To 34 degrees, so just barely over freezing is what our chilled water uh, condensing coil is going to be. Uh, I almost gave you the propane evaporation SOP. So right here, we just want to chill this condensing coil down. So as it strips it off in its gas phase, it is going to come back down this condensing coil and it will turn it into a liquid form. Now here, you're going to have something like a SEP funnel or a stopcock. Uh, there's different things that you can that you can put right here. And this is not the, the procedure that you have to do. It just looks like this. You want to take and heat up your water, make a steam, go past your steam, and then recondense that. Now, since the terpenes are going to be a lot lighter than the water you will be able to discard your water first uh, the aqueous layer if you will and then the organic layer much like anything that you're doing in your liquid to liquid extraction this in fact would be a liquid to liquid extraction and there's a little bit of gas involved I guess there is water vapor so uh, there you go and then as uh, your terpenes will collect up on the top you can even add a dual condensing coil if you want to maximize yield or a dual collection condensing coil type apparatus uh, but this is very very simple to put together you got a boiling flask another boiling flask with a larger mouth opening that you can actually put your cannabis into and then a stopcock and then you will just have your uh something not a Liebig condenser but yeah in in essence a Liebig condenser a condensing coil uh vertically and then you will attach all of that um you know with your fittings and then you'll just have something that's got a stopcock right there at the bottom you can even put a set funnel down here if you've got one that'll fit down on there and just make sure it's elevated enough where you can discharge at the end this is just a simple griffin beaker but so so you will discharge your water layer and then what's left over will be your cannabis terpene so the sop is fill the cannabis flask with fresh frozen material or richly harvested terp matter i don't know why i worded it that way that's just what i had in my head richly harvested terp matter is actually when you harvest the plant there is a specific time that the terpene content is at its most 
uh, is, is at its largest content. That is the time that you want to harvest the material and you want to be very careful when you're processing your material, your dried flower material, not to expose it to too much heat and humidity and just leave it out. All of that is going to cause your terpenes to degrade and if that's what you're after, then you should take very good care of that. The best way to get your cannabis derived terpenes is from fresh frozen material directly harvested from the plant and then frozen nitrogen blanketed and left like that until you are ready to extract. You're going to heat your water up to 230 degrees Fahrenheit and you're going to chill your condensing column to 33 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to allow your terpenes and your water to evaporate and recondense and then drain your water layer and that's what we just talked about. So we want to heat that up. The steam goes through 33 degrees. It's going to recondense and then we just drain our aqueous layer. Guys, there's not much to this. It's very, very simple. Or if you do not have that available, you can extract cannabis with propane as cold as possible. When I mean as cold as possible, if you're not at least negative 30 degrees Celsius or better, you are not cold enough. So you want to be very, very delicate. Get as cold as possible when you're extracting your cannabis. And this is also a way to extract your terpenes and your cannabinoids simultaneously. You want to use a heavy amount of solvent when collecting. So when your LPG system, for example, most of the time as a consultant, I would recommend two pounds of solvent for one pound of biomass. We're actually going to use four pounds of solvent for every one pound of biomass. And also, instead of just leaving a few PSI, a few residual PSI when we're looking to go ahead and get our um, our oil back out of our collection flask, we are going to leave about almost a half a pound of solvent behind in that oil. Now, um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. We want to do this small scale because if we're taking and we're covering our propane, this is going to take all day. For instance, most of the time you would heat up your collection flask to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit to recover all of your propane and then use your solvent collection pump and then recondense it, blah, 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 right through your condensing coil, negative 10 degrees, right? You guys already know the spew. We've covered that in, in depth already. So, but with this, when you're recovering your propane, you do not want to be at 115 degrees Fahrenheit because the propane boiling point is so low we gently want to just heat our extract to about 10 degrees celsius now this is going to be long and slow but the benefit is going to be sweet then we can use a centrifuge because they have different molecular masses to separate our cannabinoids and our terpenes so something like this prism right here in the right corner is something that you can use to go ahead and separate uh, your your can cannabinoids from your terpenes, then you can collect your terpenes and re introduce them. So those are two simple SOPs that you can use to where right now you can start making your own cannabis derived terpenes and adding them into your oils or your vape pens or whatever you're doing. In many effects, you can use some aromatherapy with those those um, those terpenes because they are known to have some medicinal physiological responses in and of themselves. Guys, that's all that I have for you today. It has been a blessing, a privilege, nay, an honor to be able to consult with you today. If you have any questions that you would like your video answered, then go ahead and drop those down in the comment section. The comment section is lit. There's a bunch of people that are looking out for that. You can also go to uh, facebook.com backslash WKU consulting and you will find a page where a lot of other technicians have been added to the group and you know they discuss and bounce ideas so there is a community there for you to get plugged in with this video that we're doing today is actually outside of uh, you know the plan that I had for my media group however there was a person that's constantly commenting on our videos and constantly watching and subscribing and 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 just doing a lot to support us and that person had asked if we could do a cannabis derived terpenes video so we in fact did decide to do one because we love you guys and we 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 love your support we really appreciated it seeing everything and the way that you guys grow and mature has literally been worth all of the information that we pour into you and so into you and we just know that that will return a harvest we will see you in the next video peace out